This is my Somali tea. Real slow. <laughs> You're not gonna pour it for me? No, no I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> so you know, this place is a beautiful, really beautiful place. Uh, what is it? Cafe Casilla. Mm -hmm. Cafe Casilla. The simplicity of it, the serenity, the wonderful lighting that it provides and offers makes for a really, really, really good intimate conversation. Yeah. Right here on the rooftop. On the rooftop. That's one of those hidden gems that we love about Kenya, Nairobi. They, they utilize every space. Absolutely. Right here and overlooking the Karen area. This is yeah. This so, is nice. you know, you know, this today is a, it's a, it's a special day. You know, um, really want to just talk about why it's special, but definitely why it's special for you because it's your mother's birth anniversary mm -hmm. fortunately she's no longer with us you know she loved Africa she loved Africa you know it's pretty challenging for you I know I want to just you know, talk about her remembrance <laughs> you know, and maybe what you may feel or think how she would if she was still uh, still amongst us living in Nairobi, what she would like, you know, all that stuff there. You know, and how, how you dealing with it? Yeah. You know, I started to go down the, the dark rabbit hole <laughs> this, um, this morning. And I had to climb out and try to focus and remember the good things. Yeah. And yesterday I was playing um, the Gambian artist. I can't think of her name, but how we prepared to come to Africa. Mm -hmm. We, I don't know, we dived all in into the culture, into the music. And my brother had introduced uh, to us, this Gambian artist. I wish I could think of her name right now. And my mom loved her. She played her all the time. We would come home and I could hear it and I'm like, mm-hmm, she's getting ready. She's getting ready. <laughs> and then coming was very, um, I don't even know, we realized really how impactful this was going to be. But remember, we before we came, had a sit down. Mm -hmm. I think you were at work. We had, and I had the moms to fully understand when we leave, do you understand that you may not ever come back to the US, that you're gonna be buried on the continent? Mm -hmm. Were you there that day? I don't think I was. I think I may have been at work. Yeah, and they were like, okay, that's what we want, you know? <laughs> She, they were against they that's they were fine with that yeah. um and we we've actually did like uh, um the living wills that day we made copies of all the important paperwork and their wishes you know crazy. we did we did their burial wishes and we did all of that so that i can have it on the drive and if that happened 
and they pass while we were here, we can give that information out to the rest of the siblings. Right. Um, but no way in my mind that I think she was going to pass away two and a half years in. I definitely didn't think it. So, you know, I battle with going from anger to why, why her, to why you leave me, to all these different emotions. And then I, this morning I had to remind myself that my mom had the best passing away mm. I could ever imagine. It's like unheard of, like. So then it goes, why did she get to have that? Mm. And it was like, well, I made it her to have such a beautiful homecoming, but it was to comfort me as well. Mm. Because something like that can make you hate where you are. You know, that's a good point. I never thought it was true. I, I, I about could hate, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the whole experience was so amazing that we actually had time to be able to have her loved ones there. <clears throat> and doctors, around the clock nursing care. And sure. Even the children and the grandchildren was on, you know, they were able to stream in. And we actually prayed over her and literally they said goodbye. Right. Right. Who gets that opportunity? It's true. And then um, my mom always said, she wanted to be cremated, especially in the States, because she was like, I don't really have no friends. Ain't nobody going to come to a funeral. Don't waste your money. <laughs> so now we in Africa, we in Rwanda, and the whole town shows up. It was the most incredible, amazing, beautiful thing. I mean, the process of arranging, you know, all of that and okay. being at the forefront of it because of course, allowing you to just not have to deal with those things, but me being able to handle those particular things and and see how the, the community of the Rwandan people uh, operate when it comes to the matter of, 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 of passing and I think really it has so many your mother's passing may Allah be pleased with her it has so many blessings to it because it allowed for us to be able to leave Rwanda with a better taste in our mouths because we were able to see how in her passing it brought together uh, we as families and community individuals that we met and saw when we first got here, we didn't see them again until yeah. that time. Full circle. <laughs> full, full, full circle. circle. And they presented themselves in, the, in, in making themselves available to our needs the very same way they did when we first got here. Mm -hmm. So it was really beautiful to experience uh, that. And, and also with her, you know, and, and particularly Mama One, Mama Africa. Gotta love her. Sister Rita. Gotta love her, both of them. Mama Africa will climb up in the bed with her. Absolutely. And just... Talk to her. For hours. For hours. Mm-hmm. And she... I mean, she's had friends, very few of, in my lifetime, but none actually lasted the duration of her life, you know, or, or proved themselves to be a genuine friend, a real friend. Mm. So I was, my heart was so blessed to see she had been able to experience that kind of friendship. Like she took her last breath holding her hand. 
<laughs> so it's only a year, you know, it's only been a year and 13 months since she left. And kind of weird trying to figure out what do I do for her birthday now? You know, all she wanted was crab legs on her birthday. <laughs> And even if we weren't even in town, she'd be like, well, you better Instacart, don't don't play. You better make <laughs> sure I have what sure I'm, I'm supposed to have. And then remember the one birthday, it was the birth the year before we left. We took her to the play. That mm -hmm. play, you remember? I remember. The whole family, but mm -hmm. she was so excited. Mm -hmm. And now that she's gone, I realize mm. the love of art mm. and culture. Mm. She, she, that's, that's all she was about. Very much so. Very much so. She taught me that so, I mean, it was like embedded art, culture. And the love of our people. Yeah. Yeah, so. So let me ask you this. Because, and, and you, you, you voiced it on occasions uh, in remembrance and reflecting on, on, on her and prior to her transitioning that, you know, her happiest moment was when she was in Kenya, right before, yeah. you know, she, she passed away. I know? don't know if it was her happiest moment, but the last time she was happy. Hmm. Okay. Because she, we've seen her so happy in Africa. Sure, sure. I sure. don't know when it was the it was happiest, happiest moment. moment. She didn't. Mm. Do you think that? Um, <laughs> how do you, if she were still alive, like what do you think she would enjoy? And of course, you know that same thing and we'll say hey listen we, we're going to Kenya I know because she had that experience she'll be like hey let's do it if, if she was still alive we'd be still in Mombasa you think so we could, <laughs> there ain't no way we could have escaped the beach mm. I don't know because we still got the we have the privilege of being able to go I think she would she would have got a, a chance to, to to get the convenience and the efficiency and you know she was cold I don't know <laughs> <laughs> My mom was already a city mouse. She'd be like, y'all can have that. Get me a condo over here. <laughs> she probably would have stayed She there. ain't playing. <laughs> she been taking a train to visit uh -huh. her in Mombasa. Probably so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that I get comfort in remembering. Remember, we came here, and then two weeks later is when, we, when she passed away. True. And when she was here, she ate crabs, <laughs> lobster, right. pump, I forgot what it's called. She was just eating everything she couldn't have for three years. And then, you know, and then when she got home, we were thinking mm, your gallbladder's messed up. You, your ulcers, because she was killing it. She was getting her grub on. Y'all understand, we were in like food prison over here. <laughs> so even with that, I allowed her to have her favorite foods. She was swimming and, and you know, and then the, the beach. She just allowed her to have everything that she loves. He did. So, you know, it's a very trying day, you know, still kind of fresh, you know, but I'm just, you know, blessing to be able to hold her high in remembrance knowing yeah. that she enjoyed uh, living on the continent thank you and her wishes to come to the continent and live and to pass away to transition from the continent and you know she had a very very good uh, thank you very much This looks very delicious here. Yeah. yeah, it looks like Korean fried chicken. It looks, it looks chicken. very, very delicious here. You must be. So, 
if I may just share uh, real briefly, you know, my takeaway in special moment in remembering her and remembering something about her, which is very meaningful for me is that, you know, it's, thank you. It's very, uh, it's always as a husband, you know, and her being, you know, mom being your mother, you know, naturally she's going to always look out for your best interests and want to know that your best interest is being looked after, if you understand. And I always wanted to be able to get from her a nod, I guess, a certain nod. And I'm thankful to Allah that I was able to get that nod uh, when she expressed her her happiness and our efforts, you know, what we were doing with the YouTube channel and how we were affecting people, how they were responding and how, you know, it was it was turning upward, if you will. Yeah, that was right at that time. Right at that very time. And that really made me feel uh made me feel good. And I was grateful that I got that nod you know, uh, of approval, if you will, from her. So I hold that, you know, with me and I carry that. And it it, it, it feeds me when it needs to feed me uh, as far as inspiration and then motivation. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was that was really special. Yeah, I would be really special. She 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 was able to make her amendments um, exactly that too well, exactly. It's, it's, the whole thing is just so amazing that it keeps me from being angry and keeps me from having a cold heart as that whole period I can I can say was really beautiful sure it was, sure it was. And even though it's painful and you know at times I feel lost I really don't know how to exist half the time because <laughs> I lived for her for so many years so sometimes I'm lost but then uh, I look good <laughs> well you know rest assured and you know this without me saying it you know she was very proud of you yeah you know she we're always very very uh happy to be able to have an opportunity to say anything in relate in relation to you you know about what you've done and what you're doing she always that's my daughter even her her uh, uh in her her whatsapp you know her name it was uh uh, uh, uh what is it mom mom uh brockington adela's mom or something like that so anybody that called or whatever what? it was said uh adela's mom yes <laughs> <laughs> so, so that in and of itself so she was very proud of your accomplishments your achievements you know and uh, you know that without me saying and as long as we you know you can continue to you know do what you do and be inspired and motivated by by her you know she remains she lives she lives yeah, so we're gonna dive into this birthday breakfast. So she she, she loved eggs, so we're gonna eat she, these that eggs. Was her thing. Every morning she has some Don't scrambled have eggs and cheese. Listen, the last <laughs> sentence she said to me, <laughs> I made her some eggs. This is like the three days before she passed. I said, Did you like the eggs, mom? She said, That nasty shit. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't play with her eggs. <laughs> Did she just call my eggs nasty ish? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could cook her the, everything she wanted in the world, but I wasn't allowed to make her eggs. Well, she knew how to handle that. She knew how she wanted it. So. <laughs> well, All right, well. The great day, you know, remember her and hold her high and. Keep on loving. Yeah. Keep on yeah. Loving. All right. <laughs>
Does Look, he... mom, no hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's good. It's good. The chicken is really cooked real well. The eggs are good. Mm -hmm. Those eggs, is... Those eggs mm. taste like my mom's. They do, I, I promise you, that's the first thought that I had when yep. I tasted it. 